Hey there. This is my new Republic resonator, and I thought I would take a minute and talk a little bit about it. I just got it back from the shop a couple days ago from having a setup, and it plays beautifully. Um, and I've had it in total for maybe a week and a half, so I thought I would talk through um, what I've noticed about it, about this guitar, and about resonators in general, because I've never owned one before. Uh, that might be interesting, and I'll play it a little for you later to get a sense of what it sounds like and, and my impressions of it. So these are made in Austin. Uh, they sell uh, new for I think about six or seven hundred US or eight hundred something like that. They're about a grand up here in Canada, um, or they were in any way. I'm not sure. Uh, at least this was when it was new ten years ago. Um, it's uh, it's a nicely built guitar. Uh, there are a few weird things about it. One is, and I guess this is a resonator thing. The neck is just huge like it's it's not fat front to back like some um like old sg necks and stuff it's it's not it doesn't have a baseball bat feel it just feels like a guitar neck only bigger if it's thicker and it's wider and the binding makes it wider and it's just a big neck i don't mind it it takes a little getting used to going back and forth between this and say my old martin which has a little rinky dink little neck but um but if you had small hands you'd have difficulty um getting around on this guitar. It's, it, it, the neck's really big. Um, in contrast, the body is small, and it's hard to probably to tell from my camera. If you put my head next to it, you get a sense of how big it is next to my head. It's, uh, it's just a little bit bigger, I would say, than a Les Paul body in uh, profile. The thickness, it's not quite as thick as a Dreadnought. I'd say it's about the same thickness front to back as, say, a, an, an OM size acoustic guitar. It's really much thicker than any electric you'll play, but um, um, you know, so it's a small body. It doesn't uh, lose anything in volume. It's very loud, as I'll show you in a minute. You can see that the uh, the resonator cone itself takes up most of this part of the body, so I guess that's the main sound generating thing, and I guess some sound comes out of here too. I don't know how the physics works. It's got a uh, one of these old slotted headstocks, and it has a very cool looking, very antique looking um, tuning, tuners with yellowed plastic machine heads, so it looks um, vintage. I've also noticed that I also noticed they put some lacquer on the side of the uh, binding and kind of rubbed it off, so it looks just yellowed with age and tobacco and 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 sweat and stuff. It just it looks like an old instrument. Um, this one had the previous owner when he bought it also bought this pickup, which he installed himself separately. This is a national, I think it's called a slim line or thin line pickup. Um, it matches the guitar beautifully. It looks like it came with it, but this is actually aftermarket and he installed that himself. It's stuck on here with some double-sided tape and there's a, see the wire there and there's a plug here. He must have drilled a hole in it to install that. Um, I, I've tried it a little bit. It's very, very low output. Um, so I'm going to have to, we'll see how it works out in a gig situation um, um, because I'll need a preamp or something. It's just very, very, very low output pickup, which makes sense. It can't have very big magnets in a pickup that small. Um, so what else can I say? Um, the, the, I had a very fine little Ma and Pa, um, guitar repair shop around the corner from here, in downtown Toronto called Shy Boy and Tex. A couple guys have been Tex in town for a long time, set it up for me and they did a great job. It's, uh, it plays very, very, very easily now. When I got it, the guy who had it before, I think used it for both slide and, and non-slide and I don't intend to play a lot of slide, if any, on this thing really. Um, so I wanted it set up very much like my other acoustics and they did a great job. It really feels the same except for the big fucking neck on it. Um, the only one issue is there's a high fret right here that needs to be reset and glued in. There's a buzz. I don't know if you can hear that. But other than that, it plays, uh, impeccably all over the place. Just beautiful, um, beautiful medium, what is it called? Medium low action for an acoustic. The other thing that happens when you lower action on a resonator, I learned from this tech, is that there's a little bit less en energy transferred to the resonator. It makes it not quite as loud, um, but but that doesn't bother me at all. Um, in order to lower it, there's a... Um, okay, I'll show it to you. Inside here, there's a little uh, wooden, like a biscuit there. Very, very thin front to back wooden bridge, and they have to take that out and sand it down. And the sides of it are beveled, so it, it was apparently quite a, a production to get it um, nicely seated in there, but it's good now. Um, speaking of this bridge, um, because there's that fragile piece in there and the way it's constructed, um, they put these covers 
on top of the bridge. Um, and um, I can see why they're, they're there, but they take getting used to because, of course, most of us are used to using the heel of our right hand to damp, dampen strings on both electric and acoustic guitar, and you can't really do that here. You can, but by the time you, the flesh of your uh, the heel of your hand touches the strings, you're three quarters of an inch away from the, the bridge, and so it's, it's not nearly as subtle. So really, I think you have to accommodate with uh, using other damping techniques with both the fingers of your right and left hand, and a little bit of, of heel of palm, excuse me, damping, but not, um, not, as, not as much and not as subtly as usual. Um, so observations about it uh, sonically. It's, 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 uh, these things were, of course, invented to be loud, and it is. It's, it's crazy loud, especially when you're right on axis with the speaker. And there's no way I'll be able to capture with my little condenser here and the way we're set up just how loud it is, but it's, it's loud. Just trust me. And you can pound it as hard as you want, and it just gets louder. There's nothing like with, a, with an acoustic, like a high end acoustic, when you play harder, there's sort of a compression thing that's happened as the wood kind of hits its limit in terms of its ability to vibrate, especially a smaller body guitar like an OM or an OTT like my odd 18. Uh, this, how you play the louder it gets. <laughs> um, but I did discover kind of by accident that um, I was playing with it well, my, and my girlfriend uh, got on the phone and I didn't want to disturb her so I started playing softly and I discovered there's a real sweetness to it. That, uh, that I wasn't expecting. Um, and I would say, say since the action was lowered uh, it's sweeter sounding it's not it's not as loud it's not as barky it's not as much like a resonator it sounds more like an acoustic just a metal one um, uh, the other thing I noticed about it um, is uh, is something that I look for in any acoustic instrument that I've ever owned recently at least and that is the way the notes behave as they die down as they die away so so if I play this chord And I don't know how much it, it stands out uh, for you on this recording, but um, the fundamental drops off before the first overtone. So when you play a note like this one, I very distinctly in the here, room here go, ah, like, ah, like the, the, the fundamental dies away, and as the note dies, the first overtone hangs on for a bit. My Martin does that in a big way. My Larave does that. Um, my my old uh, Santa Cruz used to do that. Um, I, I just love that. I think that's part of what gives an acoustic guitar sound its texture. So this is it. I'll just play a little bit for you just to get a sense of what it sounds like. Um, I'm using my uh, Apex 435 condenser mic. Um, I'm just going to turn up the input level a bit here just to make sure you pick up all the be beauty of this thing. Um, and I'll just play a little bit of whatever. <laughs> The buzzing you're hearing is bad technique, it's not the guitar. <laughs> I must not look at the screen while I'm doing this because there's latency and it messes me up every time. I've got quite heavy strings on this, but it's the scale length, which I'm not sure what it is, is makes it quite easy to play. And then... Hope you enjoyed um, hearing me talk about it. See you later.